Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning, Father. I was going to sing, but then I thought you'd all leave. <laughs> so we come to celebrate Sunday Eucharist during Easter season, celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We begin by asking forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins. <laughs> Bring us all to an everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to you, and on the world. We praise you, we bless you, we give you glory, we give you our life, we give you thanks to your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to you, and on the world. We praise you, we bless you, we give you glory, we give you our life, we give you thanks to your glory. Lord God, and the King, Lord God Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Son, Lord God, and the Son of God, Son of God, you can take away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples, and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord, in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. From there, they sailed to Antioch, whither they, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all, and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give thanks, O Lord. Let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of, of the glory of your kingdom, and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let them make known your might to the children of Adam and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. I will praise your name forever.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing, or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only for a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles tells us Paul. Saint Paul proclaimed good news. In the book of Revelation, the second reading, John the Apostle and the author of that book says he saw a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus in the Gospel tells us, I give you a new commandment, love one another. All three readings point out that with Christ, everything is changed. There's a new start. There's a new way of living. There's a new way of thinking. There's a new way of acting. There's, with Christ, a new way of relating to others. What does that really mean? What is Jesus talking about? He says, love one another as I have loved you. He's talking about doing good. That's how you define love. Doing good to another. Willing good to another. 
Jesus is not talking about something only emotional. He's not talking about something simply romantic. He's talking about doing good to another. It's hard to do that. Maybe all the time. Certainly at least some of the time. And it's not the way many things are done today. Jesus is asking, hoping, encouraging, suggesting, commanding that we basically did live different kinds of life. A new way of being a person. A new way of living on this planet. A new way of treating other people. Pope Francis calls this new way a revolution in tenderness. A revolution in tenderness. By that he means, in his own words, the power of love that connects, comforts, cares, using eyes to really see others, using ears to really listen to others, to listen to children, to listen to elderly, to listen to families, to listen to spouses, to listen to those who are afraid of the future. Jesus then ends today's gospel saying, this is how everyone will know you are really one of my disciples. This is how everyone will know that you follow me. This is everyone, this is how everyone will know that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you love one another. Sometimes newspapers, CNN, Fox, social media, local outlets can present a pretty somber, <laughs> discouraging picture of our world. The evil war in the Ukraine, COVID pandemic, violent crime, Homelessness, inflation, rising cost of living, disrespect for other persons, at times rage against the teaching of the Catholic Church. These are facts of life. But does that say it all? Is that really the whole picture? I don't really think so. I've been a priest since the end of the Civil War. <laughs> so I've seen a lot. I have seen so much goodness. I have seen so many good, truly holy people. I have seen that new world coming to be, what we call the kingdom of God. God simply will never give up on us. If you look, if you really look, you can see grace at work. 
you can see love at work, doing good to others. Think of healthcare personnel, volunteers, first responders. Think, for instance, of the many Polish people and others taking in millions of displaced, homeless Ukrainians into their own homes. For how long, they don't know. That's the kind of love Jesus is talking about, doing good to others. That's the new world coming to be. That is the revolution in tenderness. Jesus tells us, I have a new commandment for you. Love one another. This is how everyone will know you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. What a great way to live. No? <laughs> and let us now perfect all the things that we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, the Lord from Light, the God from the Lord. He died and not made it, and not sent to one of our, who in him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was the God of the Virgin Mary, and he became him. For our sake, Jesus was the God of the Holy Spirit. He suffered death and was buried. And then rose again on the third day, and the Lord was his Christian. He ascended into heaven, and is here at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the rest of the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the joy of the Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy act in the Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the gifts of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us offer all of our needs and intentions now to God the Father. That we, the Church, may grow in our faith and always open to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord I pray our prayer. That individuals and nations will come to a greater respect for the gift of human life and the value and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord, Lord that the sick will know the presence and peace of Christ in their pain. We pray to the Lord, Lord that our elderly, especially those who are alone or forgotten, will be cared for with the dignity and respect they deserve. We pray to the Lord, Lord that our beloved dead will know welcome at the eternal feast of heaven. We remember, especially during this Mass, our deceased parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. <laughs> Father, we ask you to hear us. We ask you to answer our prayers because we give them to you with hope, because we give them to you always in the name of your Son, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who lives now forever.
Fred, my brothers and sisters, uh, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Pray the Lord for the O God, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, made us have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that the duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 May holy therefore these gifts we pray, and sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us. But by the cross and resurrection, we are Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty <laughs> Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now all dare to say, in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And we wish each other the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everyone.